Power to liquids is a chemical engineering process heavily relying on the Fischer-Tropsch process, which I covered in my last video, holding the potential to make hydrocarbon mixtures like crude oil in a sustainable way. In PTL, we utilise renewable energy and specialised chemical operations to produce hydrocarbons in an ultra-sustainable way. This is looking to be incredibly promising for aviation, for production of sustainable aviation fuel, and it has the scope to transform other transportation forms, heating and industrial sectors too. Let's examine the process more closely. Sine gas or synthesis gas is a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen and is a central feedstock in the chemicals industry. Power to liquids is no different and PTL heavily relies on it. At the heart of the PTL chemical transformation is the Fischer-Tropsch process, which uses clever catalytic technology to convert sine gas to a distribution of hydrocarbons. Sine gas can be made from a variety of sources and for those who are curious, please do check out my last video. Long story short, PTL aims to use carbon capture to harness carbon dioxide, which is then converted into carbon monoxide, and electrolysis of water to make hydrogen, as a super renewable way of making sine gas, rather than say, gasification of coal or reforming natural gas. This sine gas can then be fed into engineered Fischer-Tropsch reactors to make liquid hydrocarbons. Alternatively, we can use a direct methanol reactor, depending on what products we desire. We have effectively converted electricity into fuels here, hence power to liquids, or otherwise known as electrofuels. Electrofuels can be compared alongside products like gasoline and biofuels, and whilst the cost equation still remains unattractive, as the cost of carbon capture and electrolysis reduces, it is projected to become cost competitive. PTL does not use biomass either, thus having no land use requirement. Before we delve into more process depth, I'm excited to announce the launch of Chemify's first course, An Introduction to Chemical Engineering, currently on a limited time 35% discount pre-sale and to be fully launched this summer. This digital product stands out from the rest, offering the most up-to-date and comprehensive introduction to the field, from molecular fundamentals to plant scale, and from cutting-edge bio and nanotechnology to the transformative systems thinking mindset integral to chemical engineering. This course delivers it all in a relatable and easily digestible format. If you're a student eager to delve into the discipline, a STEM professional looking to expand your expertise, or simply an enthusiast, this is the course for you. Don't miss out. Check out at the link provided in the description or reach out to us via email with any questions. Honing in on the unit operations, carbon capture is pivotal in the PTL process. Of the three main carbon capture types, most is done presently with post-combustion, where amine solvents are used to absorb CO2 from the air, followed by a rather costly and energy-intensive amine solvent regeneration process to separate the carbon dioxide out. Efficiency-enhancing methods are being worked though, like novel materials for more efficient capture, or chemical looping combustion, where a dual reactor setup with a metal oxide exchange chemical manages to eliminate a separation step. Electrolysis is another key PTL unit operation. This process involves splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen using renewable electricity, proton exchange membranes, and alkaline electrolyzers are two prevalent technologies for this. Whilst the core water splitting idea remains the same, the two setups differ in their electrolyte type, operating conditions, catalyst choice, and more. Fischer-Tropsch reactor engineering is highly complex, featuring three-phase reactors in some case, complex hydrodynamics, and solid liquid vapor transfer in some instances. On the other hand, the methanol reactor directly produces methanol, a cleaner burning liquid than the Fischer-Tropsch hydrocarbon distribution. Reactor choices for either methanol or Fischer-Tropsch are there, each offering their unique pros and cons, whether it be technical, logistical or something else. We've seen a number of different unit operations here. Let's put this together in a slightly more rigorous fashion to understand what a PTL process flow diagram might look like. 
starting with the electrolyzer and direct air carbon capture unit to obtain carbon dioxide and hydrogen, and then we have the reverse water gas shift reactor to obtain sine gas. Flashing off any water and readjusting conditions, we can feed this into a fischer tropsch reactor. This outputs some useful gas products and unreacted sine gas, which we can separate out and recycle back in. Some liquid products, which we can meticulously separate out with distillation and the like. And some liquidy, solidy, nasty waxes that we can hydrocrack into more useful products with the aid of a zeolite catalyst. All this can constitute a rather complex process flow diagram, but you get the gist. The aviation industry is nicely cut out to take advantage of PTL for a number of reasons. However, the products arising from PTL touch just about every part of the chemical sector, whether it be agriculture, detergents, or energy like grid balancing, power storage, or supplying power to remote off-grid areas. PTL processes and so-called electrofuels will certainly prove instrumental in the rundown to a more sustainable and greener future. So I hope you learned something interesting today, and perhaps a slightly different application of renewable energy that isn't interconnected domestic energy generation. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to share, subscribe, and sign up to Chemify's mailing list on the website.